So the new GSAP animations, uh, the UI has been fully integrated in Webflow. Now you can use that UI to create GSAP animations directly on your Webflow project. Uh, this has been long awaited for uh, ever since Webflow acquired GSAP, I think almost one year ago. We've been waiting for this release, for this uh, new uh, animation system or interaction system inside Webflow. And now we have it and uh, we're going to test it out. So what we're going to do is I have this old animation that is done with IX2 and we're going to move it to IX3. We're going to translate it and we're going to see how that works. It's going to be a fun use case. So let's check it out. All right. So I have this. Uh, website as you can see uh, it's just a hero section it has this animation so if I preview it has this animation of entrance so um, the image so you, so you can see so it's the image entering like this and then the nav bars come in from up and down and then the text appears uh, and this is done with IX2 so there's the page trigger page load you know the old system uh, you can see that this is um, done with the move and um, yeah, so and then, and then there's another page load that uh, does the home hero scale, which is the image. So what we're going to do is translate this in uh, IX3. So I duplicated the page. Uh, I have another page. This has another character. This is an astronaut, not a lion. And um, yeah, we're going to do this uh, with GSAP interaction. So if you see here in the bottom, when you go to interactions, you go to the bottom. You're going to see that you have this option to go for the interactions with GSAP, which is the new one. Uh, it does require a bit of learning curve. Uh, there, there is a learning curve to it. It does require a bit of learning. It's not as easy as the IX2, but uh, in my opinion, when the IX2 as well came out, it was not as easy and people got used to it. And, and this is the same, so we're just going to get used to it with time. However, uh, it's much more complex and it uh, covers a lot of more uh, features or elements that you can do uh, and animate. So let's check it out. So what we have here is uh, we need a trigger for a page load trigger, uh, preferably on the hero square. So we're going to add a page load trigger. Uh, now you can see it gives you options of actions that are there that are preset. So like a fade in, slide in up, uh, drop in, similar to how IX2 did, uh, but we're going to create our own custom interaction. Um, the nice thing here is that you can target now with uh, not only class, but with like an ID or uh, an attribute or a custom selector. So there are many ways to target uh, your elements, which is great so that you can uh, target in different ways, uh, making different custom animations across the website. So let's target this. So I'm going to target it with an attribute. Uh, we're going to call it uh, hero and then we're going to give it and value of scale and uh, this is going to be our hero square so let's just go back to it so we exit the interaction uh, panel and then we go to hero square i'm going to add a custom attribute that's going to be hero and then the value will be scale so now let's go back to interactions and we can go back to our page load interaction we can see that uh, this is the trigger so it's a page load placed from the beginning when the page loads and um, this is a default trigger. And then we have the action, which we're going to be customizing. So this will be page load animation and um, it will trigger target the hero scale. And then what we want to do is give it a from. So the from is basically how we set uh, initial values in the IX2. So we want to add a start value to this. And uh, you can use uh, a lot of properties. So if you go to plus, you can see there are a lot of properties that you can pick from. And in our case, we're going to pick the width and height. So we're going to get those properties. I don't need the rest, so I can uh, remove them. And then it's going to be from zero view width to uh, 25 view width. That's my first animation. And then here it's going to be zero view height and then uh, 50 view height. All right. And then here you have the stagger option, which is great. The split text option for text, which is great, which we, we can test out on the text here. Um, however, for this now, uh, we created this animation. Now, it's a great thing. You have this timeline thing. So you can preview your animation, which is amazing. Um, and in this case, I can see uh, my animation. OK, this is how it's going. I can adjust it. So for example, I want to adjust this time to be one second. So it's uh, very convenient. 
And now when I create the next animation, so we're going to stay in this uh, page load, and I'm going to create another animation, and I can just duplicate this one. And then uh, this will be uh, hero scale to full. And then we're going to target the hero scale. We're not going to use a from this time, and we're just going to use 200 view width and uh, to 100 view height. Um, and also we're going to give it the duration of two seconds, let's say. And then we can view this. So now you can see, you can see I have this timeline and you can see where uh, this animation is starting. So this is starting from the beginning and I don't want it to start from the beginning. So maybe I can tell it to start from one second. So then it's starting right after the the previous animation and this way you can see uh, the timeline or the flow of your animations which element is going after which element you can adjust this very easily like this and i think this is very very convenient uh, for our use cases so you can see this animation it's looking nice here okay so uh, this is the animation for the hero scale and then now we can add animations let's say for the nav bar uh, just like the previous one so let's uh, add a custom animation and this time it's going to be the navbar so we can select it with a class or we can select it with an attribute like we did with um, with the hero section so let's for example select an attribute and call this navbar and then we create navbar and then this is the value top and navbar value top will have um, so we'll just make it 1.8 seconds maybe because it's after the hero section comes in. And then uh, we're going to start at one second. And then uh, we're going to say it's going to go from, it's going to move in the y axis. And we're going to say it's going to move minus 10 uh, view height. Or actually, it's going to be from minus 10 view height to uh, zero view height. And then we can preview this. All right, so we need to select the navbar first. So we go to the navbar and then we add this attribute. Let's select the interaction. And then we add here navbar value top. And then we can do the same for the bottom navbar. So this will be navbar value bottom. Okay, so we have uh, selected attributes for both nav bars. Now we can see our animation. So we can see the animation coming in and then the nav bar slowly coming in from the upside. Uh, but we can also continue uh, customizing this animation. So let's uh, customize this. So this is nav bar top. And um, let's customize it a bit further. Maybe we can uh, say it comes in after two seconds. So that first in this and then and then it comes in. And then maybe we can give it even more move, like uh, maybe 30, 40. So it goes out of view totally. All right. So and here as well. Now, this is nice. So here as well, you can change the ease. So uh, what differentiates GSAP, I think one of the main reasons we use GSAP is the easing they provide. And these are very cool. So for example, let's say I use power two out and uh, that will be the navbar animation. So you see it has this different type of animation now. Uh, if I use power to n, um, and this affects how the flow of my interaction goes. So maybe I can move this a bit here because I want the nav bar to appear at the right time. So maybe this one uh, a bit further, and then I can do power three n maybe. So let's test out this animation. Uh, it's looking okay. Uh, and then we can continue and I can add the nav bar bottom. And so you can see I can creating this timeline um, of uh, maybe this one will be 1.8 and it will delay by one as well. And uh, we're going to target attribute nav bar. Nav bar and then we're going to say bottom. And then it's going to be from... Um, 25 view height to zero view height and we're also going to use power 3n and let's see this one now so we can see it comes in 
and then the nav bars come in. Um, did we use power three for the other one so we can make them come in at the same time? So this is power three n, one point eight seconds, power three n, one point two three seconds delay. So now if we preview this, it's nice. All right, so now we can continue with. Um, so let's name this navbar button, and we can continue with finally the text here. So let's uh, select it, and also let's give it an attribute of, let's say, hero text, not hero, hero. I type very fast and I move very fast, I know that. Uh, so let's go back to here square, interactions, and then we continue with our timeline. And now we need to add one last animation, which is the fade of the uh, text itself. So this will be um, duration of one, let's say, and to delay 1.5 seconds. Um, we're going to give it a power 2n. And then we're going to say it's from opacity 0 to opacity 100. And we're just going to use that uh, property. Let's name this uh, hero text. And now we can preview the animation. OK. And uh, of course, we forgot to uh, select the attribute. So this is hero. And we're going to select it. And then the value will be text. Now, if we can preview this. It's working very nicely. Uh, I would delay this even further, the hero text, uh, maybe a bit here, so that. Um, Or maybe also a bit further. Keep the hero text at the end. Very nice. And we're going to do 2.5 delay. All right. So now if we preview this animation, uh, it's working very nicely. It's all uh, smooth and there's a nice power in and out. Um, let's just try four, power in four. And you can see it's coming in very smoothly all right so let's save this so now i have this animation uh, we can uh, save it and exit this interaction panel uh, we can publish this and now let's compare the old gsap uh, the old and now let's compare the old ix2 with the new one so let's go back to the main page and let's see the animation so we can see the animation coming in very smoothly and then if we can go back to the old project, I think that was it. But let's uh, just go back to the main page and uh, preview this. So now this is the old animation and this is the new one. Now what I noticed with the new iX3 interactions is that it has a problem with the page load animations, especially the page load animation. So if you can see this, I'm going to reload this uh, like a hard refresh. So I can do Command Shift R. And uh, as you can see, I have this glitch in the beginning where I still see the element. So every time I command shift R, I can still see the elements for a second. And then the animation happens, uh, which is correct. In this case, in the iX2, the old one, this didn't used to happen. So if, if you see a hard refresh, uh, I can see some elements which are out of the container, perhaps. However, the main elements that are affecting the interactions are not appearing. For example, the text. I mean, here you can see the text, but here you always see the text in the first load. Now, I think this is due to the integration of GSAP into the Waffler system. Uh, this might take a bit of time, but I'm sure they will resolve it. I already flagged this to Waffler, so let's see about that. However, the new interaction panel is amazing. I'm really happy that uh, this is released. Uh, this is going to increase a lot of productivity and um, it's going to uh, decrease the time that it takes to create cool animations. So now we can have much cooler websites made by Waflow. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll be making more videos uh, in the upcoming days and see you in the next one.